This keyboard has one thing going for it, and it does it with flying colors. I'm Rio Gion, and this is Rio Gion Keyboards. This keyboard reminds me of someone buying a giant hulking SUV to basically drive by himself. He doesn't need all the extra room, but he likes it that way. Just look at all of this extra space. On the one hand, you could say that this is a wrist rest, but why? Why don't they just make the wrist rest detachable? Then there are these side sections that seems like it does very little for the keyboard. At least with the other super-sized keyboards, they make up for it with extra buttons, volume wheel. You don't get that here. Which makes you think, why should you have all of this space in to begin with? I really like the front of the keycaps, but there's no way that I'm bringing this keyboard to work because of how much desk space it would take. On the other hand, this keyboard is a great conversation starter. I can just imagine the number of people stopping by my desk just to say how big this keyboard is. The layout is not standard, which is a bummer because it means that it would be harder to find aftermarket keycaps for the board. It's interesting how they decided to put the lights for the num, scroll, and cap locks above the arrow keys instead of the usual right corner. It seems like they have the space for it. The lighting isn't really that bright, which is odd because they use the same Cherry MX RGB switch as Corsair, and the Corsair board seems brighter than this. They seem to be using different types of plastic and they decided to use the plastics that makes the keyboard feel as cheap as possible. The Cherry MX RGB switch is a great addition to the board because it gives you a reason to justify the price tag. I like how Cherry uses a clear housing for the switch. It makes the lights shine through easier. But the lights aren't as bright as they should be on other boards which uses the same type of switch. Maybe this is just my particular board, and maybe other boards will not have the same problem. Thankfully, this keyboard uses Cherry MX stabilizers, which is awesome because it makes the keyboard so, so much easier to clean. I don't have to constantly fidget with the stabilizers to make sure that the stars align before I can put the longer keycaps back in. Now I am sure that some of you, it doesn't seem like a big deal, especially if you never plan to clean your keyboard or replacing keycaps, but I do clean my keyboards. I do replace keycaps. And having Cherry NX stabilizers makes life easier. The keycap is made from the typical thin ABS that is found in most gaming keyboards in the market. Which makes me think that most of the money is going in the switch because clearly the chassis is from cheap plastic and so do the keycaps. At least this is clean unlike other manufacturers that rush when making the keycaps. It is nice that the flip up feet does have rubber on them. It makes the keyboard feel really planted in both positions. Another nice touch is the inclusion of cable management slots, but the slots are not made for the keyboard's cable. Instead, the slots are made for headphone cables. From looking at the back, it really puzzles me how they couldn't just make the freaking wrist rest detachable like other keyboard manufacturers. They can really reduce the overall footprint of the keyboard, but I guess it wasn't the keyboard's MO. On the corner lies 
headphones and microphone ports, which is nice for those that want to plug in their headphones and microphones separately. But I will never ever truly understand why they decided not to include a USB pass-through when there are two USB ports. There's so much extra space. Why couldn't they use the extra room for a USB pass-through? Other supersized keyboards have them. Why not you? And at least the cable is braided. So they have that going for them, which is nice. The software is definitely one of the keyboard's weaker points because it's the same situation as the Sora. The software crashes often and having to push apply, making the software very tedious to use. Now I am aware that there is a auto apply option but when I use this feature, the software would appear like it would crash even worse. The great thing about the software is the UI. The features are very easily laid out so you know exactly what to do to make the keyboard perform the way you want. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the UX due to the constant crashing. I like the amount of customization you can do for the lighting since you can import and export files. I just hope, I just hope that there is a strong community behind this product. I feel like with a couple more updates, they can fix the crashes, the software will be great, and this is no longer one of the keyboard's weak points. The typing experience is this keyboard's main selling point, despite it being a gaming keyboard. I absolutely fell in love when I first lay my hands on these keys. The closest thing I can compare this typing experience to is the G-Skill KM780. With Cherry NX RGB Brown as well. The strokes are so buttery smooth and the tactility is just made to perfection. It is just the right amount of resistance so that you feel like you press the keys and you don't feel finger fatigue for typing long durations. I find myself making excuses to type on this keyboard, which is my biggest praise when looking at how a keyboard types. I thought that the Sora was a great typer and then I felt this keyboard and I never wanted to look back. This is a brilliant keyboard for typing. For a whopping $149.99, this is a very tough sell because of the amount of flaws that this keyboard has. For a gaming keyboard, it has a bank of macro keys which is fantastic for MMO gamers. The keys are very comfortable to hold for long durations, which makes this keyboard great for FPS gamers. You can double tap quickly with this board but not as quickly as reds, which makes the keyboard average for RTS gamers. Something that is subject to change in the future is the software. I know if they have enough people complaining about the software, they will eventually patch it. What cannot be changed about the keyboard is the overall massive size. Although, it's starting to grow on me, but I know that this is a instant turnoff for those of you that value your very, very limited desk space. The addition of three profile switcher is great, just in case if you need to switch profiles rapidly, but I don't see myself using this feature. It's a great typer and a decent gamer, but it doesn't go above and beyond to justify the steep price tag, especially 
when it's in such a highly competitive market. If they can patch the software to have even more lighting features and have a strong community backing, then there is some sort of future proofing with this board. But until that day comes, I honestly cannot recommend this keyboard. Anyways, if you liked the video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more awesome content.